Okay, here are two more examples of functions with infinite limits. This first one, f of x is 1 over x minus 1 squared plus 1. And we can tell by looking at this that the function will have a vertical asymptote when x equals 1 because that will give us a zero denominator. So I'll draw in a dotted line at x equals 1. And if you plot some points or if you plot this on a graphing calculator, you realize there's a horizontal asymptote right here and we'll talk about horizontal asymptotes next. But there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1 and it goes through the point 0, 2 and the point 2, 2 and it looks like this. It goes, it's going up here and here and then getting closer and closer to the, the horizontal asymptote here and it's a nice smooth curve. try to draw this well. Okay. Okay, it looks something like that. And that's not a cusp right here, that's a nice smooth curve through those points. Okay, that's this function. Now in this case, the, the interesting behavior occurs here at x equals 1, and at that point the left and right limits seem to be the same if we get close to one from the left side the function is zooming up toward positive infinity and if we get close to one from the right the function is zooming up toward positive infinity so it looks like the limit at x equals one is positive infinity and you could actually say that you could say the limit of this function as x approaches one is positive infinity but it would really be more correct to say the limit does not exist because an infinite limit is not really a limiting value. As x equals 1, the height of the function does not approach an actual value. It grows without bound. But we can still use limit notation to describe the behavior of the function around x equals 1. And we can say the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x is equal to positive infinity. And we can say the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x is equal to positive infinity. So we can use limit notation to describe the behavior of the function, but we recognize that in this case the limit does not exist. For a limit to exist, the left and right limits must both be equal and must be finite. And here's another example. The function in this case is f of x is equal to the tangent of x. So let's graph this. The tangent function has an asymptote at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2 and at, whoops, at negative pi over 2 and at negative 3 pi over 2. And it's going to go through the origin right here and it's going to go through this point right here. So when x is a uh, pi over 4 will have a value of 1 and corresponding point down here and then similar points here, here, and here. Just going to plot a few of these points because that helps me sketch the curve neatly. And then we'll draw in these curves. And these are vertical asymptotes. And you should have a pretty clear mental picture of the tangent function pr from previous studies of trigonometry. Okay, and then we're told two things. We're told to find the limit as x approaches pi and the limit as x approaches pi over 2. Okay, well here's pi right here. As x approaches pi from the left or from the right, you can just see on the graph that we're getting closer and closer in both cases to a y value of 0. So that's easy. We can just say the limit as x approaches pi of f of x is 0. Now as x approaches pi over 2, it's a little different. Here's pi over 2. and So the limit as x approaches pi over 2 does not exist. The function grows without bound, positively here and negatively there. But we can still use limit notation to describe the behavior of the function. We can say the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left of f of x 
So if we're coming at that from the left, it's going up. It's positive infinity. And the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the right, if we approach pi over 2 from the right, this function is going down. So it's negative infinity. The limit of that function is negative infinity. Okay, here's one more problem. We're told to sketch a graph of a function with the following characteristics. The function is defined for x is between 1 and 3. And the limit as x approaches 1 from the right has to be 1. The value of the function at 2 has to be 1. But the limit as x approaches 2 is 0, and the limit as x approaches 3 from the left is positive infinity. Okay, let's see if we can put all that together and make a function here. Well, the function's only going to exist between 1 and 3, so in this region. So we're not going to be plotting anything to the right of 3 or to the left of 1. So we're not going to be plotting anything to the right of 3 or to the left of 1. It's only going to exist in this region. Now, let's do something easy. Uh, f of 2 is equal to 1. That's easy. That point has to be on the function. The value of the function at 2 has to be 1. Okay, so that's done. Now, the limit as x approaches 2 has to be 0. And that means the limit as x approaches 2 from the left and from the right has to be 0. So that means we're going to have to have a function that's headed towards 0. Here, it could be coming like that or maybe like this but there'll be a hole right there because the value of the function at 2 is 1. We've already plotted that point. But the limit is going to be 0. So I'll draw these lines as we get close to 2 from the right or the left. The value of the function is headed towards 0. And let's look at this. The limit as x approaches 1 from the right is 1. So if we're getting closer and closer to an x value of 1, we have to be getting closer and closer to a y value of 1. So let's put an open circle here and have this function come in like that. And that's an open circle right there because the function isn't defined at 1. This is it's defined for x is greater than 1. And then we're also told the limit as x approaches 3 from the left is positive infinity. So we're going to have a vertical asymptote here. And this function is going to zoom up. So something like that. Let's just make it a little bit neater right here. and Make that zoom way up. And that will do it. That graph satisfies all four of these characteristics here. That we were told to make the graph satisfy. That's not the only possible answer. This segment right here it could do anything. It could wind all around as long as it converges on the value of 1 there and 0 there. And this segment right here could also wind all around as long as it ultimately zooms up here as it gets close to 3 and approaches a value of 0 there as x gets close to 2. So they don't have to look exactly like these curves I drew, but those curves I drew are one possible answer satisfies all of the the conditions here we were told to satisfy